War. War never changes. But my Max surely do, so in today's video, it's time to start a brand new building series based on one of my most beloved franchises, Fallout. This is another one of these mugs that were stuck in my head for years and I think now is just the perfect time to start. Not only have my building skills grown over the last few years, but also the April release of the Fallout TV show sets a great time frame for working on the build with all of the hype that is going on in the Fallout community. So it's time to put on your power armor, reload your plasma rifles and take some right away because we're in for a hard ride through the post-apocalyptic wasteland. So let's get started right now. Ok, but what exactly are we talking about here? Well I'm glad you asked Jimmy, cause as it usually is with starting a new building series, today we're going to go through the plan I have for the mock, the brief story I want to show, and of course we're going to start building some main elements of the diorama, so yeah, there are a couple things to talk about. And let's start with the setting and the overall plan of how this mock is going to look. The idea is to have the entry of the vault and the terrain in front of it set somewhere in the Mojave Wasteland. The look I am aiming for is something similar to the Vault 51 from Fallout 76, but of course as I mentioned set somewhere in the desert, so here I played around with Photoshop a bit to remodel the shot from the game and that is more or less how the mock should look. So the entry door will be embedded into the desert rock face with a courtyard in front of it and a part of a road link up to it all. Now I want to make the vault not yet opened so the doors must be intact and surrounding it I will make a raider camp who established their settlement here in hopes that the door will soon open giving them a place for a new base. But for now, of course they had to work with what they had, so their camp will look just like something straight from a settlement system in Fallout 4, made with a bunch of wooden structures, a lot of trash and tires scattered all around, some typical Mojave wasteland plant life, and maybe even a broken down car somewhere between all the trash. Now since it is a desert landscape, the main colors for the mock are going to be tan and dark tan, with a bit of medium nougat and maybe even some dark orange to break the scheme, and of course light and dark bluish grey for concrete elements like the vault entry and the road. So that is more or less the idea I have, but before we start anything else, we should talk about some of the figures I want to use. You may remember a fig barf I made back in 2022 with the three main factions being Vault Tech, Brotherhood of Steel and Raiders. And these are going to be the starting point for the rest. As for the Dweller and Dogmeat, I have more or less an idea for them, but I'd rather keep it in the dark for now and we'll talk more as the build progresses, but since it will be a Raider camp, I may try to remake Mr. Handy to fit more of their faction, something similar to Rose from Fallout 76. I will probably not use the Brotherhood at all since there's no place for them in the Mojave Wasteland, but for sure I will use these two raiders and make more in a similar style to populate the camp. And actually, I took some parts that I had in my collection and put together a couple more raiders just to have an idea of what route I want to go with them. I will probably make some minor changes because not all of them are ideal and maybe add a couple more in the future, but for now we have a solid squad of baddies so no point of making more without any additional parts. Ok, but now with all that basic stuff out of the way, let's talk progress because I bet you want to see what I've done already, so let's jump into the building part, shall we? So the first thing I needed to do was to establish the size of the mock, and for that I had to make the center part of the whole diorama, and that is the vault door, which was definitely the hardest thing I made since my Indiana Jones mock, but we'll talk about that more in just a second after I talk about the surroundings. As for the size, having the door about 16 studs wide, 
I knew I had to make the whole concrete wall at least double the size, plus add some rockwork on the sides and I decided to go 2.5 base plate wide, which should be wide enough and for now let's say 2 base plates in depth. In the middle there will be a podium on a couple of stairs just like the Vault 51 that I showed earlier and here I will probably make a spot for the Raider Leader on some kind of a throne. On the sides where the double bricks are we'll have a concrete wall with the entryway and on the sides where the dark tent slopes are I'll make the rockwork that will surround the whole entryway from the sides and from the top. But now let's address the dead claw in the room and talk about the door. I must say that it was a hard struggle to make especially that I wanted it to be as close to the original as possible having 9 teeth on the sides and not like I've seen most mocks with only 8 but after a couple of days I came up with a perfect solution for this. The centerpiece is made out of regular 6x6 rounded wedges and around them I strap one of my favorite pieces in recent months, threads. Having 45 links connected I could make the teeth perfectly connecting one every 6 links apart which is either pure luck or just another example of perfect lego engineering. On the inside I've also used another flexible part being the chain that will make the edge of the circle wider which is the right size now and it's held firmly with a 1x4 tile with a single stud from the bottom. Later I want to use these yellow flex pipes to make the look complete and of course remove the stickers from the wedges but for now it's still a placeholder and I'm just happy of how accurate it is and how sturdy it came out. The frame I'm using for now on the other hand is still a work in progress because I'm not totally satisfied of how the gaps turned out but I guess I'll worry about it later when I move on to making the vault itself because there is still a lot of work before that and I want to make the groundwork in the front first. So moving on to the landscape the first thing I did was changing the layout a bit since like all of my mocks it has to be easily dividable to take to conventions so I left the back side as it was but the front I made a bit bigger and in separate sections with cut corners just to have it a bit more interesting. These corners I decided to make using one of my favorite edge techniques simply stacking a couple of layers of wedge plates. Both sides will be similar with slight curvatures of wedges and to add variety the road in the middle will be later done with a snot technique. Here I was testing out the road with light grey but after wandering some time in the project Mojave mode in Fallout 4 I decided that dark grey will be a better option here. For now I just wanted to make the edge to the desired height and then moved on to the other side with the same idea and technique making it to more or less the desired height and then finally move on to making the road. And here when looking at one from the game I just couldn't do a straight line between it and the sand so I had to figure out how will I make the connection and what I came up with is just the best thing a builder could ask for. Since there will be a transition between wedges and the snot road I'm making with slopes that has to be totally random by nature, I managed to make two layers of the sand and place the road in between those two plates. This way the lower darker sand and rubble is half a plate below the road and the tan wedges are half a plate above it making a nice transition not only with its shape but also its height. Another advantage of this is that the snot road I am able to make two studs thick which will be easier to decorate later on with some rubble pieces and besides that I was able to eliminate the base plate thickness under the road because that is something I always want to hide just to have a more natural look to my builds. This way I made both edges of most of the road and I could move on to making the inside structure which is where the real fun begins because of all of the cracks, holes, rubbles and other imperfections of a post nuclear street. So here I made a crack in the road with some rubble, again a half plate lower than the road 
and added some cracks made with slopes, quarter circles and even some dead grass sticking out. Next I wanted to make a piece that was loosely placed in a bigger crack to have it slightly tilted to one side and here I think I did quite a good job since it is uneven with the rest so having that I started making the yellow road markings in the middle of the street also a bit crack which came out pretty nice as well. So after that there was not much more to do but to move on with the other side but here I didn't want to connect both base plays and that is why just after the yellow stripes I used tiles just to have it disconnecting easily when I'll need to pack the smoke and put it in boxes. On this side I also experimented with cracks this time having them lean even lower making some bigger holes with slopes and whatnot and of course adding some other random details. And this way I made almost the entirety of the road, besides the front edge of course, but I'm not quite sure how I want it to look yet, so I'll leave that for later. But the road itself is something I can be really proud of. All of the cracks, uneven surfaces and other imperfections already look like something taken straight from the game. I've never done ruins in a scale like this before and I have to say that it's much harder than it looks. Not only the surface is uneven for which I constantly had to mix up the support from below but also I was changing the orientation of stud constantly for a more natural look. This road alone took me over a week to make but if the rest of the mock will look as good as this part, I have nothing to worry about. Well, maybe besides the time spent on the build. I finished the road with a tan drift towards the end, also as irregular as the sides, so the next step should be covering the base plate with plates and start making the sand all around. But that I think will also leave for the next episode because even though it's not that big of a deal to just cover it, I want to play around with different techniques just to make the landscape look more interesting with again different levels of the ground and that would probably take a few days more so let's leave it at that. I have to say that I'm really enjoying this build so far. I wanted to get into this theme for so long that I'm enjoying every moment while it lasts but at the same time I can't wait to see it all completed. But how do you like the idea of the mock and the progress I was able to make for this series premiere? Let me know in the comment section below, smack that like button to let the algorithm know that this is something you want to see grow and of course subscribe if it's your first time here on Kubrick. I will see you all in the next episodes of this series that should be out every two weeks as we usually do and until then as always just keep it bricking.